wow, this is big. This is huge. I never expected this to happen. And it's a great thing that it's actually taking place. YouTube is asking an actual YouTuber for opinion. It's surreal. I never thought that I would see it, but yet here we are. So how did it get to this? Well, there is a tactic that is being used since, I believe, 2016. And this tactic is very effective. It's being used by legacy media against social media. And the way the tactic works, it's like, imagine if I were to have a lot of connections with publications like The Guardian, BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, The Washington Compost. And then I go into a position on social media, on a forum, and I start having various negative opinion about people who like to fish. I would say, you know, people who like to fish, they're murderers. How can you do such a cruel thing to a fish? I mean, blah, blah, blah. And the people backing me from these publications would hype me up a little to, to give me like some sort of prestige. It's like, yes, you know, a Romanian finally speaks truth about the horrors of the fishing industry. Now, when I do this, I'm not harassing a single person. I'm just saying negative things about the community of people, the people who like to fish, but I'm not harassing anyone. However, from that particular community, you're going to have a couple of individuals that look at me and say, dude, like, shut the fuck up. Oh, you're, fuck you, asshole. Oh, now I'm getting targeted harassment. You see how it works? Like, all of a sudden, I, I didn't harass a single person. But now, like, look, I'm getting, I'm getting targeted harassment. And then you have the friends from the other publications that are like, oh, uh, a Romanian is being harassed by the fishing community. Maybe the fishing community is time to grow up. Maybe the fishing community is time to change and stop harassing people based on nationality. Right? That's how the game is played. And it's a very profitable game, very lucrative endeavor for most people that are involved. Uh, the press gets a lot of clicks. You know, their articles get shared around. I get a lot of money from donations, right? Other Romanians are like, oh my God, like, look, this guy's being harassed because they don't know what's going on. They, they didn't follow me. They just read the headline. I get rich. The press gets clicked. Everyone is happy except the actual fishing community, which gets its name tarnished and being dragged through the mud. Now, a lot of people on the internet have caught up to this type of scheme and they realize that there's no point in sending harassment to these provocateurs, to these agitators, because really that's what they are. So they're mostly ignoring them. And because of this, the agitators are desperate to find links to harassment. Like they're, they're really struggling hard to the point where they're even self-exposing by sending harassment to themselves. Because like there's no more harassment. The, the demand is high, but the supply is low. It's like a free market. Um, and now they water down the word for harassment to the point where literally anything can be considered harassment. I mean, they were accusing Tucker Carlson of harassing a journalist just because he said her name three times in an interview. It's like, what? How, how is that? Right? Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, I have seen some of these people consider harassment just by uh, posting their public tweets. Like, if you have someone like Jeremy from The Quartering, like, showing a tweet from a public person. It's like, look what crazy thing they're saying. Apparently, that's harassment. It's not harassment when their fans try to cancel someone else, getting them fired. No, that's perfectly fine. But if you put their tweet up there and you show it to people, like, look what crazy things this person is saying. Oh, that's harassment. You're not allowed to talk about it, right? So this is what's happening. It's actual targeted harassment by people claiming they're getting harassed by YouTubers. Because... YouTubers like Jeremy and others, they're pretty much like talking and exposing what these people are doing. And it's like, look, like these people have no moral hill to stand on. Like they, they're very immoral people. They do a lot of shady tactics. Uh, the publications they work for aren't 100% um, on the up and up. Like they're corrupt. They're taking money from the companies. The reviews that they're giving aren't 100% legit. And because of it, they're, they're freaking out. And they're freaking out because they're losing business. Right? Because if you're a publication on the internet, which, I don't know, talks about gaming or uh, movies, then their business model is to make friends with the corporations. Because it's a I scratch your back, you scratch my back type of relationship. The corporation gives them early access, gives them early CD keys so that they can play a game before everyone else. So they get early clicks. And in exchange, it's kind of implied that the journalist has to give a good review 
of the product that they played or the movie that they seen. And this is why you notice the major disconnect between what the official critics are saying about a movie and what the actual people who buy tickets and see the movie see, say about the movie. Uh, it's because the journalist the, in 2021, that, that's a corporate shill, cannot just say whatever they want. And because they can't say whatever they want, the public notices that and starts turning away from the publication. So short term, they make a lot of money, but long term, they lose their credibility. And here's where the YouTuber enters, because the YouTuber runs on a completely different business model. He is not sponsored by the corporation. He gets money from donations from the people that enjoy watching him and by people watching his videos. So the YouTuber has the ability to just say, no, like Star Wars is a bad movie. Here's why. Here's why I think it's bad. And when they do this, well, the shills lose out. The shills get angry. And the shills are now on the offensive because they don't want this competition. They view it unfair. So they created like this 72-minute article. Seriously, like it's 70-something it's minutes to read it. And, and they made like all these weird connections. It's like, look, uh, Steve Bannon is puppeteering uh, Milo, who is puppeteering uh, someone else, who's puppeteering the quartering, who's puppeteering Ethan Van Skyver. It's basically like a community of people where some of them might know another, but they don't know like each other. You know, like I, I don't think uh, geeks and gamers ever spoke with Steve Bannon. You know, it's just like, <laughs> like it's this bizarre conspiracy theory where if certain people agree that Star Wars is bad, they must be white nationalists. I mean, it's, it's just insane. It's ridiculous, right? Um, but they're creating like this pseudoscientific papers in order to justify naming the YouTubers that argue against them white nationalists. Because YouTube, on their terms of service, doesn't allow white nationalists. So if they can somehow prove that people like the quartering is a far-right white supremacist, then he will get banned from YouTube and he will stop creating competition to these hacks, to these shills. And normally, up till now, YouTube would just side with the legacy media. You know, they would side with the shills because like, okay, well, they're working for prestigious publications that we've heard about. We don't really care about what some random guy with a beard on YouTube has to say. So either they would be quiet and ignore it or they would just side with the shills. But in this situation, this is why I'm really impressed is that they actually want to hear what the quartering has to say for once. And that's really great. I... I hope that the quartering is going to manage to make his case. Now, the quartering, from my personal opinion, is not a very good debater, but he's not the worst debater either, right? Like, I would be much more comfortable if Tim Pool would have been there. Like, he, he actually does know how to talk with the people better than the quartering does. I would be very happy if uh, Mr. Bettaker would be up there uh, debating with uh, YouTube's Trust and Safety Council. Uh, but... Uh, it is what it is, you know, it's, it's the person that was asked and he was um, attacked by uh, these shills through various campaigns trying to actually shut down his business, shut down his channel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see if this is going to go in a favorite way. I personally think that YouTube wants the controversy. I definitely think they do because... YouTube as a corporation, you know, they might be interested in politics, like the elections or, you know, like important stuff. But when it comes to video games and when it comes to comic books and when it comes to just entertainment, they might want a little bit of controversy because at the end of the day, controversy does drive traffic. Uh, and YouTube is still a business. They want the traffic to happen. And and, and they want bread for the masses. They, they do want uh, people who tune in on the platform to get the experience that this is real life. Like these are actual people having a controversy. You're not getting this on Twitch, by the way. Like if you go on Twitch, the people and their politics there are so far out that it's very unlikely you actually know another person in real life that behaves like a person from Twitch. Well, what was the Twitch mascot? Like dressed as a furry and be like... I got all the power, and no one can do anything about it. And I'm, and I'm looking at it, and I, Jesus, you know, like, I, I don't know a single person in real life that would behave like that. All the power. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I mean, the best case scenario is that YouTube is actually going to listen, and they might make a public statement, and 
you know, be more clarifying on what is and isn't harassment. Because again, like the word is so watered down at this point, we're just naming or showing a tweet is harassment, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, or, I mean, it, it could go the complete other way. And they could just say, well, you know, we did our best. We we gave the quartering a shot. We listened to him. Uh, however, he doesn't seem to have uh, all the correct answers. And he is a serial harasser. So we decided to punish him. That, that could also happen, you know. Um, unlikely, but the possibility is on the table. But hey, you know what? Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.